Look at this man, yeah. looking fresh, looking ready to rock and roll, looking ready to get down to it. How are you feeling? I feel good. I feel good. Slept most of the quarantine, so we had to stay in our rooms. Um, so they got negative results back, so I literally been in a room sleep since then. So felt good. I came in a little bit lighter, um, so that worked out because I ended up not working out last night. So I uh, feel fresh, feel good, feel ready to go. Got a got a little bit of a compliment to pay you uh, at the start of this because obviously we spoke in the in the build up to the Burns fight and you were in a good place, really good place mentally going into the fight, and then in the aftermath, obviously it didn't go your way. Um, but then I saw obviously what you posted on Instagram in the immediate aftermath when you were, I think you were on the way to I don't know to get your medicals and checked out and what have you, and you I, I thought that you dealt with that defeat with incredible dignity, very very humble the way that you dealt with it, and I'm sure that came across um, with with the fans and I just wanted to put that out there man because what we listen we love trash talk and there's going to be a bit yeah. this week of course we, we we Colby we know that but it's always nice that when the fight's all said and done that you know fighters can obviously show uh, that humility and that humble side so I must I must give you that credit my man it, it was I good to see it was good to see what are the learns from the fight as you as you were obviously making that journey and I'm sure the dust the dust has now settled on all that what are the learns that you take away from the Gilbert fight uh, <clears throat> the Gilbert fight, I prepared accordingly. I was ready for the fight. Um, it was just a, it was just a moment where I was trying to get started, and whether it was trying to get started in the beginning of the fight, and then you know it was like chaos real quickly, it was all over the place, and then I didn't find I had a cut and trying to get back started, and then getting taken out and then trying to get back started, and then getting kicked in the leg and trying to get back started. So um, I never once in that fight. Thought in my mind, okay, he's beating me all. Okay, I'm gonna get knocked out. I'm gonna get finished. I kept thinking, okay, let me find my way. Let me find my way. And you know, unfortunately, I ran out of time in that fight. So um, I don't have much to hold my head down with. Obviously, the the vicious style will lead that storms out and knocks people out and do like that. Didn't get a chance to come out of the skin that night, um, but he's still there. I'm sure he'll be there this week with a with a bit of needle in the fight. We'll get to that in a minute. Did you did you manage to take a bit of a break from that? Because you've, you've had a crazy... I know a lot of people have had a crazy year with the COVID thing, but you had a crazy year as well. I know that you were out in Thailand. You came back preparing for the Leon Edwards fight. That obviously didn't materialise. And then you've got this crazy change of opponent. You end up fighting Gilbert Burns behind closed doors. Did you manage to take a break? Not from a physical aspect, because you're a fit guy, but just from a mental aspect. Did you manage to get away? I, I, had, I had to take a break. You know, I was... Even the Leon Edwards fight, you know, when I accepted the Leon Edwards fight, it wasn't like, okay, this is a fight that was really going to push my career. And, like, he had approximately, like, 50,000 followers. And not that that means anything, but unfortunately in our sport, it kind of means something now. It means that people are aware of you and they know who you are. And I would have had to basically introduce him to a lot of people in his own country as far as the fight thing goes. Um, that fight was supposed to be Kobe. And for some reason, it couldn't figure out. The fight against Usman was supposed to be Kobe. The fight against Darren Till was supposed to be Kobe. All these different fights were supposed to be Kobe. So I accepted the fight. I said, this kid's tough. He's a good fighter. Um, so I really tucked away and I really started training, trying to prepare. I get back and the day, not the week before, not a couple of days before, the day I was supposed to hop on a plane and go to, to, to London and fight him in O2 Arena, things started going down. So then everybody started throwing their name in the hat. And that's mm -hmm. what we got the picture because he had beat Damian Maya, which we all know Damian Maya doesn't have the, the gold in his mind yet. I still have that in my mind. So I'm a different animal than he was after losing to me. So when when I when I didn't fight Leon and then Gilbert threw his name in there, some other people threw their name in there, and that's how his name even got in the mix. And on Thursday I said, All right, well, if you want to fight this Gilbert kid, I'll fight him. So I was gonna fight Gilbert. Um, March 21st in the unknown place a couple of days before the fight. I didn't know where it was going to be it. And then Dana called me and said, the whole fight's off. So yeah. then it was like, what do I do? How do I maintain? Do I stay in They never knew who we were going to fight. It was like, I kept wanting to know when I'm going to fight, when I'm going to fight, who I'm going to fight, and I didn't know. So I was stretching this camp out because I didn't want to stop the camp. And then called me and said, we got one for you in two weeks. Now what do I do? Like jump back in and try to get it done in two weeks. So I let that camp linger on for so long. And from fighting March 21st all the mm -hmm. way to fighting May 30th, is a big span. So I separated from the training camp for a second, took a mental break, and then, you know, I just, just put myself in a position where 
I got that training because I wanted to, because I loved it, not because I had a fight. And then they started talking about Kobe again. Then I told my manager, I said, man, so you got a bottle game in? Don't even call me with Kobe because this has been two years, you know, with the Kobe thing. And then finally it got to the point where it started looking real. I took a vacation with my family in Colorado and I came back and I said, all right, let's do it. So we got in camp and um, I got a complete reset from the Burns, Gilbert, yeah. Whoever else that was asking me to fight, complete separation, right to a camp. Have you, I mean, this is an obvious question to say no to because of everything that's going on in the world. You you love a pre-camp in Thailand. You've not, I assume you've not been able to do that for this fight. Well, I've only done that once. I've done a pre-camp. Oh, ah, right. I thought, I, thought it, I thought it was a regular thing that you did. It was well, just that, for the Leon Edwards preparation. That's ah. something that I wanted to make a regular thing. So I did a pre-camp in Thailand. But I never got a chance to see the benefits of it because I never fought me on. Yeah. So it's, it's something that, you know, I'm buddy with my homie Mike Swick over there in AK Thailand. Yeah. And I'm going to get back out there. We talked yesterday. But it was nothing that was like a routine that I do every time that this time I won't be able to do. Okay. I've noticed um, for this particular camp, Jorge Masvidal has been uh, involved and yeah. work, working with you. What's the psychology behind that? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have been involved, though. So it hasn't just been Jorge. That's the story that everybody wants to see because of, of the name he has. But Gerard Harris came in, uh, gave me some great work. Matt Caldy, um, Emmanuel Brooks, CJ Brooks came in, gave me some great work. Um, Johnny Evelyn gave me some great work. And all my coaches came to me. They usually don't do that. I usually have to go to um, um, Hollywood and go train with Eric Bryan at Wild Christ. I have to go to Milwaukee, Wisconsin to train to Duke Rufus. Or, you know, meet up somewhere with Dean Thomas. But they all came to me in St. Louis in, in my camp. And it was it was something that was it was so convenient. And it was so not convenient to the point where it was comfortable. It was convenient because I had one building to walk into. I have not opened my gym up. So it's not public. So it's a private gym now for me. And the distractions were minimal. And every time the distractions start to come in, I shut them down. Whether it was people, whether it was things, whether it was other opportunities, I shut them down. So... Um, it was very focused, very focused group of people. It motivated me in different ways at different times. And Jorge Masvidal was one of those guys that came in and, you know, he motivated me from, from a pure standpoint. And also he knows what I'm capable of and he's trained with me. This isn't the first time we trained. This mm -hmm. is the first time you guys hear about it, but we trained together for five years. It just seemed controversial because being a close friend of mine, he knocked out. Uh, got knocked out by Jorge. We the teammates were in the same way. We could fight. He just fought for the belt. It's just good for you guys. But it really, for us, it was business as usual. Yeah, it's good for me, man. It's good for Column Inches. So thank you very much for uh, for providing that on Instagram. Where does the dislike for Colby come from? When did this all start? I just dislike someone that can't be themselves. You know, if, if you feel like you got to create a character and if you fail at creating an image of the heel, you 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 out there. That's the easiest thing to try to make somebody. He's failing at being the heel. You know what I mean? Like he's just coming off really tacky, coming off really corny, and everything is scripted. And it's not even if it's scripted, at least let it be. You know what I mean? Funny and witty. It's just really just trashy. If I if I can find another word. So I don't really dislike him because I know him. Um, who he is. He's not somebody I would want to surround myself around, but the person that he's created is like when you create controversy to the point where you may not feel a certain way about Brazilians. You may not feel a certain way about, you know what I mean, politics. You may not feel a certain way about um, a fighter or saying below the belt things, but mm -hmm. you're making yourself say those things to become a heel. I got a problem with you because you're the same person that's ruining our youth. These kids that are, you know, committing suicide or looking at the internet and want to be this person, and nobody have any self identity and self worth. And I can look in the mirror, and when I hop off the, the the interview with you, I'm gonna be the same tyrant as as the one that was walking through the grocery store, as the one that's gonna walk into the octagon, and I can be comfortable in my own skin. And real recognize real, and I think people recognize that in me. Like it, love it, hate it, I'm me, and it's enough. Is there is there any sense of betrayal? in your dislike for him? Because, you, like you say, you, you've known him for a long time. You used to work together. You, you've shared the map together on, on countless occasions, and you probably yeah. shared more intimate conversations yeah. together. So now you obviously see this guy, and you and you, 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 you don't associate it with the guy that maybe you knew a few years back. 
Uh, betrayal has to come from betrayal to me. It's going to be def defined to anybody differently. But betrayal to me is, has to come from a loved one, a friend, a close associate, a brother. He was never that. He's betrayed everybody he's got in contact with, from John Jones being his roommate in college, stole from him, from, you know, um, Jose, I mean, Jose Aldo, not Jose Aldo, um, George Masvidal, when he basically brought him into his world and was his roommate and, you know, so I let him use his boxing coach and he was burning bridges there. So it doesn't surprise me that somebody that basically, I'm the reason why he's at ATT, was at ATT. You know, Dan Lambert started a program of high-level collegiate athletes that was wrestlers because he saw the benefit that I brought to the gym when I was trading Jay-Z, George Santiago, Tiago Alves, Dean Thomas, Eve Edwards. He saw what I brought to the table, and he wanted more guys like me in the gym. So he started this program where he brought all these high-level wrestlers in, and Kobe was one of the first of that first batch. Had it not been for me, he would have never been there. And, and, and beyond that, I, I, I used to pay him. He was broke as, he was broke as a freaking $3 bill. And I paid him 500 bucks a week to train with me for a Roy McDonald fight. So all the money he had to his name came from me at one point in time. So for me, that's something that he just would do. I don't get bent out of shape. It's not betrayal because he's not my friend. Well, that's why I use the word betrayal because I know that obviously you subsidized quite a lot of his early life in that particular gym and he targeted All you for well for whatever yeah, reason he targeted you name. and I'm, I'm I assume that that comes from you being the champ and uh him creating this heel and shooting his shot at, at you whilst uh whilst you were the welterweight champion yeah I mean if, I mean I'm not gonna do it because I don't have the time to but you do so take a scroll down his Instagram go back to 2017 to end of 2016 and 99.9 percent, .9%, almost like birth control, of his social media is me. It's all me. It's memes of me. It's comments of me. It's the and none of none of it really stuck because I didn't give it air. I didn't give it legs. I gave him one time on Fox, where I addressed him and I and I called him. I said, "Dude, I don't know what you're doing, but I just want to let you know I look corny. I gave you your legs. I gave you time." And I'm just gonna let you know I'm not gonna respond to it. You can do whatever you want to. If that's what you feel like you need to do, have at it. But I'm just not gonna respond to it. And he was like, "Oh, but come on, I'm trying to build a fight up, man. We can both make a lot of money, meet each other, at the finish line." Like he was some, like at that time he wasn't even in the crosshairs. You know what I mean? It was guys like Carlos Conant. It was guys like um, Robbie Lawler. It was guys that were at the top, top, and he wasn't even there. So I'm like, I'm not even focused on you right now because you're not in the lens of this title run. And um. Once we got that out of control, I mean, I'm under control, then he went out of control. He knew I wasn't going to respond. He knew I wasn't going to say anything. So he just started going ham with it. And until he won the interim belt, I let him do it. And when I barked back after he won the interim belt, he went quiet. He took his social media off. He shut it down for a bit. And even this fight can. Why do you think he's so quiet? Why do you think you haven't heard a peep out of him? Mm -hmm. It is. Now he know he got to live up to those words that he spoke, and he got to get locked into the cage. And he remember what training with me was like. He remembers very clearly, and he didn't win a second, a second in there. And he not gonna win a second on Saturday. From your point of view, is this the biggest fight of your career? Um, hmm. It's hard to disrespect some of the legends, some of the future Hall of Famers I've beaten. And um, we speak of those guys in that regard, but it's time we start speaking to me in that regard. You think about Robbie Lawler. Tell me how he doesn't end up in the Hall of Fame. Tell me yes. how Carlos Conner doesn't end up in the Hall of Fame. And you got young, young, young lines like, you know, Darren Till. I can't see Darren Till leaving his career without winning a belt. Can't see it. You know what I mean? Even guys like Kelvin Gastelum that always been right there. You can't always be right there without having one time where it happens and come true for you. So... When I look at my legacy, he's not the most important fighter with this fight, but because of what he stands for, and because he stands for somebody that don't believe that he is enough, that he got to create this image. I think it's a, it's a big time for me to make a big statement for everything that's going on in our world, for everything that's going on with me, and for people to recognize that, one, God is real. Two, I'm still the best in the world. And I think he's the best person to showcase that on. Just on what you touched on there, because 
you mentioned your Instagram, and I do go on it. I do have a little bit of a look down, and you're right. Everything on his Instagram from 2016, 17 is referring to you. But on on your quite Instagram, a bit of it, right? yeah, quite a lot. When when you when you post, there's obviously you, your fan base obviously then make reference to this fight at the weekend, and they talk about community. And obviously, you just mentioned everything that's going on in the world. They talk about Black Lives Matter. They talk about all those things, and we know where you're at. We know that you're coming from the right side of this, and do you feel added pressure when you see those comments? Because I know you read them. When you see the comments that people are saying and linking this fight to that movement. You know, I did in the beginning. I felt like, you know, I felt like in victory over um, Gilbert, I would have had a chance to get the microphone. I would have utilized that platform to speak on that. But that I was confused. I was confused on how hard I trained and how much I wanted it and the fight didn't go my way. I was confused because I thought that would have been a great opportunity to utilize that platform, but it was not, God's ways were not our ways. And it wasn't that fight. It was actually probably this fight. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I don't put the added pressure, like, oh my God, beat him for me. Oh my God, break his jaw for good. Oh my God, do this. Oh my God, you got to do this. So what that's telling me is that before you had a dislike for him, it was okay for me to lose him. Before the Black Lives Matter movement, it was okay to lose him. No, it was never okay to lose him. So I'm going to go out there and win this fight because I'm going to win this fight. I'm not going to take any added pressure from the people that dislike him. I'm not going to take the added pressure from the Black Lives Matter movement. But I feel like in victory, I'm going to kill a lot of birds with one stone. And if your discord or dislike is going to be satisfied by me beating his head in, then you're going to be very, very happy on Saturday. Um, obviously, I will make mention um, of some things that are going on in our, in our, in our world. Um, and that's the plan, but that's not my focus. So I got to focus on the fight, focus on winning, because Kobe's scared. And sometimes people fight better out of fear. You know, he hasn't talked at all. Mm -hmm. This is the only fight since he's er erupted this character. This is the only fight he hasn't spoken because mm -hmm. he knows that I'm training. So he put all this time in training. And he's training. He's training so hard. He's training to not let me whoop his ass because he can talk all this shit. So now that's the fighter I'm fighting against. So I can't focus on all the other things. I'm focused on him. Is his biggest strength his cardio, do you think? It's not so much the cardio. It's the comfort zone. He brings you into a world and realm that most people aren't used to. Most people aren't a high-level wrestler. So he can throw a couple of um, you know, pillow fists at you and jump on your legs and you defend it. He jump on the body like you defend. He jump back on your leg. You turn around and throw more pillow fists. It's all just to get to you to cling to you. He wanted, he wanted to be stuck to you like glue. And that's draining to somebody that's never experienced that, that's never been at that level when they had wrestlers that wrestle that way. I'm not one of those guys. I have had wrestlers that wrestle me and I've competed at a higher level in wrestling than him. So... His cardio is good because he's confident in it. He'll fight injured. He'll fight cut. He'll fight hurt. Um, you know what I mean? And he'll keep pushing forward because he has to. There's no other way he can win. He's not going to outstrike me. He's not going to knock me out. He's not going to submit me. You know what I mean? He's not going to counterpunch me with this great, you know, high-level boxing. He's not going to, you know, outpower me or out-explode me. He has to grind. He has to press forward. And he has to utilize what he saw in film. If I'm looking at fighting myself, I'm going to look into all the losses I have on my records when I'm going backwards. Mm. And I'm going to try to push me back. I'm going to try to put me against a cage. It's a smaller cage. I'm going to try to, you know what I mean, not allow me to be explosive and hopefully they drain me. That's what he's going to try to do. I asked you a little earlier whether this was the most important or the biggest fight of, of your career. Um, I just want to rephrase it then, because it seems now listening to you speak that it's the right fight at the right time. Because as I've said to you, when, when I've spoken to you on many occasions, there's always this nice, humble tone going into a fight. You've, I think, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Tyrone, but you've always, you've always seen it as a sport. Whereas this one, I, I, can, I, can, I can hear it in your voice. I can see it in your eyes. There's a real disdain and nastiness. It's like, it's like the old Tyrone's back, you know what I mean? There's a, there's a little bit of that street vibe knocking about right now. Is that is that a fair assessment? Uh, I wouldn't say that, to be honest. It's just real. Like, I'm just real. And I just mean business. I'm not going to say stuff that I don't believe. I'm not going to say stuff that is not true. This fight, you are right by saying this is the right fight at the right time. 
the motivation to fight Usman wasn't like the motivation to fight Robbie. The motivation to fight Gilbert wasn't like the motivation to fight Condit. I was chasing those guys down. I mm-hmm. was I was Usman. I was Gilbert. And those guys didn't provide me with that same motivation. But Kobe provides me with a different type of motivation. One, when I, I'm willing to go to that dark place, I'm willing to do some things that maybe in other fights, I, I may not have wanted to do that to Carlos. I may not have wanted to do that to Robbie. There's not anything on the list that I'm not willing to do to get the job done on Saturday. So um, the motivation is to silence stupidity in our world. Yeah, that, that motivation is there for sure. And I'm definitely back. So that's a perfect place to finish the interview. Taron, enjoy the rest of the week, my man. Enjoy the cut. And we're looking forward to seeing you doing your thing at the weekend. Go well. All right, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Cheers, Taron.